Morning everybody, Rusty from the Rusty Razor got another shave of the day. And today we're gonna to be using Crown and Cranes Tobacco Leaf and Amber. Yep. Smells good. Just think uh Haverford with amber aspect to it. So you got that kind of a woodsy note coming across with Haverford. Yeah. I like it. Works for me very well. All right, second use of the Nasset Blades with the Mercor 34C. Nice little combination. Ears. Ah, suddenly it's like the air pressure just changed my ears. Feel like they're going to explode. And then we'll follow up with some Haverford. Yeah, might as well. You know, it's like when you got all this. It's like all these different companies. I wish they had their own splashes to go with it. Because some of these I would take in a heartbeat. Hey, anyway, it's like when you lather this up. Yeah. You can definitely get the tobacco. But you definitely get the kind of the woodsy amber note coming across. So it's an interesting combination. It's like, uh, I think I've said it before. But it's like, you get uh, this one. Amber Woods. Imagine Amber Woods with tobacco. That's, that's like how I put it. Put it together. This is like works for me very well. All right. So, how's your day going? Well, it's same old, same old here. Yeah. Another exciting day in the annals of history. Some people say annuals. I say annuals. <laughs> like it's, sometimes it's a nass. Oh, yeah. Oh well. What can you do? Man, it's nice stuff. Nice and creamy. Yeah. Not much going on around here. Been down to the last few days and. I got a few more times left in my physical therapy. <laughs> uh, I think it was Matthew Lawrence a while back said, "Yeah, I had something to the effect that I think he the the people the physical therapists enjoy torture." <laughs> like, yeah, I think they do. They uh, I had a second there. Did I put the blade in this thing? I did. I'm like. Oh. I've been known to do that. Not for, it's like, yes, I forgot to pull the blade out. And I look down here, it's like, oh yeah, it's it's, it's not on the counter. But yeah, it's it, it feels like uh, physical therapists, you know, it's like they they get their rocks off, uh, making you feel it. the uh, agony. Like, yeah, you gotta move your body a little bit farther. That's not enough. Here, let me help you. Ah! Hey, stop. And typically, it's like within our network of uh, the very first time I had to go to physical therapy. You know, I had to get an order in, and it's like they had to, it's like, okay, yeah. I, yeah, now you got an order in, and we'll contact you when we're able to get you in. That type of thing. And it could be like, you know, when I had to get to the, the pain center to get my steroidal injection. It took over a month, you know, for him to get to me, to actually talk to me, to, you know, all right, now we can set this up. Well, for me... I got a standing order where I can just call him up and say, hey, I need to come in for physical therapy. I just need to start again. Because, you know, every year I go like uh, about once or twice a year. I do a session of, of a couple, two, three months worth of physical therapy. Just cause an issue will pop up like my back or a hip or, you know, something of that nature related to that and my doctor is like you got a standing order he's like you don't even need to ask you just call him up and say hey go and it's like 
uh, been going for years where you, you walk, you call them up, hey, this is so and so, and they go, oh, hey, how you doing? I was like, yeah. You, know, you need to set up some times? So like, yep. That's, yeah, that's set up for about, let's do two, three weeks where the appointments all at once. Just set them all up and go. And eventually the problem will get hashed out. And they'll take care of it. And this last bit of session, I think it started in the first part of October and it's like it's been about two months now which is about enough well all the leather just went in the bowl in the sink ah. what a waste suds down man suds down but yeah so we'll just see I was like, I'm going to wait until after Thanksgiving to, which for us, that's our holiday. In case you don't know what Thanksgiving is, it's, you know, the, uh, I think the Canadians have it in, was it October? But, yeah. So I'm going to wait and see what happens. See if it, everything's cleared up. I like the neighbors that started their vehicle, their beater. They got an old Jeep. No muffler on it. Don't, none of them speak English. <laughs> All Hispanics. Well, they got a taco truck with good food. I got good that much. Very tasty. Mind me, they had, they had my wife stop and get a, get me a burrito in forever or a chimichanga for dinner. Maybe I'll tell her to do that tonight. It's like they, <laughs> you get a, for about seven bucks, you get this thing, it's about that big. <laughs> it's like about like that, and you're like. I don't think I could eat all that in one sitting. That's a huge, but it's got it so good. It's so tasty. My wife just likes getting her little dollar tacos. And each taco's a dollar, but they put so much cilantro in it. It's like, blah. Not a cilantro guy. It tastes like soap. It's like, there's a group of people who's uh, genetic, their taste buds, like they taste cilantro and they're like, oh, and it's just like, what do you mean it tastes so good? And the others are like, nom, 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 nom. And I'm like, I'd be like me taking a spoonful of my lather and I'm like, no, 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 no. That's like about how it tastes to me. Not good at all. Yeah. The other day, we were, uh, uh, my men's group at church. We're all sitting around discussing all the stupid stuff we used to do as kids. <laughs> it's like, and all the fun stuff. And I was like, well, one of the fun things we'd do is like in the wintertime, would, uh, it's like right after a big blow, you know, you'd have a 40, 50 mile an hour wind come through and it'd blow most of the snow off the, off the lake. And we'd take our runner sleds. It's like it's, it's, they're all looking at me. What did you do? It's like, hey, we combine sports together. It's like, you know what sailing's like, right? And you know what sledding's like? We combined them together for ice <laughs> sailing. And I go, what? Ice sailing? Yeah, we take our runner sleds, you know, it's like as kids. And, uh, We'd get, we had lots of feed sacks, right? And we'd sew them together in these big giant sails. So you had this big mass of like two spread out, you know, so you got this big sail like contraption and you'd hit, grab a couple of popple trees, aspens, you know, long poles, and you put them on in, both sides and on both sides of the sled and then the wind would be going across the lake 
and you'd hold up these two sails like this and you're like whoosh, and you're going across the lake and you're hauling ass so we always look forward to it sometimes we'd even take shovels out there it's like whoosh, 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 you know it's like scrape them all off so it's just bear down the ice and uh Go flying across the lake and you could steer and it's like we learned the rudimentary of uh, aspects of sailing <laughs> but it was on a runner slide <laughs> and then you started seeing these things later in the like 80s and 90s where they take these like catamaran style things and with sails on it and they'd be ice sailing on the lakes and like we were doing that was kids in the 70s Yeah, this blade is good. These assets, I need to get some of these. More of them. Get a hundred pack of them. And, uh, they're kind of like, to me, they're like Astros. But you'd be sailing across this lake, hauling that. If it was really windy, it's like you get a windy day of like 30, 40 mile an hour winds so that just gusting. You'd start getting really good. You can start flying. And, uh, You'd aim for it on the other side of the lake. It'd take you a good couple minutes to get across. Yeah, you'd be like, and uh, get across there. And but on the other side is like, uh, kind of like trees, open area, then trees. So you're kind of aiming for the the bank on the other side that you would go into because it, you know, you had rushes and stuff, you know cocktail on the other side of the lake but it's kind of slow you down but you always aim for where the trees were not so you get across go come to a stop you know you could slow down and stop just by letting the this the sail go and then you get close to a stop but where's the fun that and uh you know we had we had uh three runner sleds so there was always somebody that had to they need to rotate through who we didn't get you know did to go across and you had to bring the sleds back and everything but you put the the poles in there and kind of wrapped a rope around it from the sled around them and just haul walk back or run back to the other side of the lake You keep doing it all day. It's like when the when the opportunity arose, where the weather was just right. Let's go sailing. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, the whole conversation started with the church where uh, my associate pastor, and he's now retired, and he's like seventy five, I think. Grew up in Florida. Part of his time, he grew up in Montreal. His dad was an engineer, so but he, you know, he knows knows what it's like to live in up north in Canada. So he appreciates all the stuff. But one of the things they did when they were living in Florida is like they made like these pontoon boats attached. They put a bike, a hammer, a bike on top of the pedals, and then they would run a chain back, double length chain. It's like the early the early paddle wheel things. They made them out of wood, and would go across the lake and he said yeah it would work if you're if you didn't you know the first few times we made them we didn't balance them very well so it would be up here and go bloop <laughs> he said if you had a snorkel he said uh where you could breathe underwater you could just keep going <laughs> but we had to engineer a better way of Keep herself balanced, or else you had to have some good balance or no waves, you know. And uh, I said, Yeah, the, the times that you went underneath and you went under, you just turned around. It's like, Did you say hi to the gators? <laughs> He's like, Well, there were always a few gators, <laughs> you had to watch out for those things. Like, yeah, imagine, like, everything in the water is trying to eat you.
Yeah, I find it interesting. It's like my, you know, he, smart guy. A lot of, it sounds like he'd done a lot of fun stuff. It's like, he's got a doctorate in theology. You know, he's pretty smart. But, it, yeah, we, like, when we were kids, we had ourselves a, uh, car. We, uh, what the heck was it? It was like, for, Buddy had him one of these things, too. Um, had a flat floor in the back. It was a rear, had her engine in the rear. Um, but they, they, they put the transmission in wrong, so they ended up, it would, all the gears were backwards. <laughs> So you could drive faster in reverse than you could forward. You know. And they said they were driving around town <laughs> like a bunch of hooligans. You know. uh, Corvair. Corvair, that's it. It was a Corvair. And they were basically going around town, driving backwards everywhere. Where they uh the local cop town cop stopped him. Hey, and I, I don't have a problem if you guys are gonna drive backwards like that with your car. Put the license plate on the front of the vehicle so we know it's like the license plate's on the correct spot. Otherwise, you guys are good. Have a good day. It's like. like who would think putting that the cop was like, you know, your license is on the wrong side of the vehicle, but you're fine. Like, okay. And then as I said, and I said that, yeah, it just shows that no matter what the, what era it is, kids will always find something stupid to do. <laughs> it's like that, that sounds like that sounds horrible, terrible. Let's do it. It's because it's gonna be fun. You know that type of dumb thing. The old thing was hold my beer. Or now it was back then when you were kids, hold my soda. <laughs> All right, I think we're done. Hmm, you're so soft. my towel in the freaking sink. Water everywhere. Yeah, it's like, it's soaked. <laughs> it's like I got a soaked towel now. Oh, well. What can you do? All right. Well, let's follow up with some Haverford. Like, this stuff is good. There we go. Let's take my... A little bit of tingling right about here. You smell more vanilla with the Haverford than you do with the, uh, it's like the other one, the, uh, this one, the tobacco leaf, it's more straight tobacco and kind of a woodsy set. All right, well, just below you'll see a affiliate link to the Razor Company. So if you want something from the Razor Company, go ahead and click on it, order it, and we'll get a little kickback. And eventually we're going to do a giveaway with it. All right, so the shave of the day, everybody, was brought to you by Crown and Crins Tobacco Leaf and Amber. So if you like a kind of a, a woodsy note with tobacco in it, this would be for you. That's kind of a really relaxing kind of scent. And then we had a second use of the Nassat Blades from Gillette with the Mercor 34C. 
Oh, look, with some Haverford. And that's the shave of the day, everybody. Yeah, it was a quick and easy one. Works for me. All right. Hope you guys have a good one. Rusty out.